good afternoon. I am uh, Pastor Jim Ward of West Elmay Community Baptist Church and chaplain here at Eden Senior Communities. And on behalf of Art's family, it's a privilege to welcome you all with us today as we take some time to really celebrate a wonderful man and a wonderful life, to share memories, to come together, offer our love and support for Art's family, for Ronnie and, and everyone, and to truly commend Art into the hands of his Savior. As we come together, I invite you to please join with me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for the gift of Art's life, for his presence, his work among us. We thank you for the memories we will hold so dearly. And we pray that your presence might be with Ronnie and his family in all the days. We pray as well, God, that as you turn our morning into laughter, we might truly remember his legacy. We might truly live to love and serve as he indeed did. Bless our time together, the words we speak, the songs we sing, the prayers we offer. May they be pleasing and acceptable to you, O oh God. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Allow me to add my thanks uh, for the privilege to be here to honor Art's life. I got to sing with him in the choir at Lakewood United Methodist, and it is a delight to be here with you to celebrate his life with you. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Art. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forever. Forevermore. And I hold the keys of all hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And I'm also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, who gave Amen. us earth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask, and our ignorance in ask. Give to us now your grace, that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your calm message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live. So that living or dying, our life may be in you, and that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Friends, receive this word from the prophet Isaiah this evening, chapter 40, verses 1 through 8. Comfort. O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places shall be made plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers flower fades, 
When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. The reading of the prophet's words for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Friends, I would like to now share with you a psalm that I personally like to share at every funeral that I have the honor to officiate. And that is the words of the 23rd Psalm. Some of you might have that memorized. If you do, feel free to speak it aloud with me, saying together, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thanks be to God. Friends, I now invite you to share in the singing of Amazing Grace with me as our friend Pastor Jim Ward leads us from the piano. The text for the hymn can be found on the back of the order of service. Let us sing together. Saying, Who are these? 
robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Friends, at this time, I invite forward anyone who would wish to share a witness to Art's life. You can come right up here to this lectern or that one to speak. You're invited to share memories of joy, memories that honor Art's memory. Come when you are ready. And Reverend Ben, I'm happy as well to bring a microphone to you if that would help uh, yes. you overcome your shyness. It's a great idea. <laughs> if you'd like to say a few words, please let me know. I'm happy to bring you the microphone, John. And please let us know your name and, and how you know Art. My name is John Henry. My voice isn't very good today. But I became kind of a friend of Art's as well as a fellow tenor in the choir. <laughs> Uh, we had some lunches together, we even went to some movies together, and I gathered from uh, getting to know him better that he had quite an interesting career and lived various places, as has our family. And I would like to just comment that one of the things that outs was so outstanding about Art was that he always thought the best of other people, in sharp contrast to myself. <laughs> John shared. He, he is, was such an important person here at Eaton, constantly, uh, uh, is particularly helping people with their technical needs. We made a commitment many years ago to offer iPads and a lot of technology to our residents, and uh, they're like me. An iPad comes out of a box, and I say, huh. <laughs> but Art was always willing to not only teach classes, but to work with folks one-on-one, -on -one, uh, really getting them up to speed, and a lot of people have been blessed by his willingness to share his I have to admit that um, I'm new, fairly new here, and I didn't know Art, but I'll tell you one thing. I knew he was a man of God because someone else told me. And I believe that we as a community need to celebrate that, even though I didn't know him. Others who might like to share. My name is Gordon Stella, and I'm the resident here from about just about four years ago. And I got to know Art through the iPad business. Uh, I was interested in that kind of technology, so I was willing to help Art. Actually, he helped me more than I to help him. <laughs> but anyway, I had an awful lot of respect for Art. He was a good man. I'd like to share. Well, we will have a chance as well to share uh, at the reception following this service in the fireside room immediately behind you. So I encourage you to uh, be thinking of some fond memories and planning on sharing those at that time. my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be an acceptable and pleasing offering in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. 
Today is a day of hope. We don't talk about that enough when it comes to funerals, I think, but we Christians, when facing death, have so much hope. Paul said, death, where is thy sting? And in this passage of Revelation that you just heard, we are treated to this wonderful glimpse of life for us beyond this earthly passage that we call death. A life that I think art will do quite well in, as there will be much singing. <laughs> I wish that I had had the opportunity to know art more than I did. I was blessed to sing in choir with him from the time I began as pastor over at Lakewood United Methodist Church. Uh, I started there September 2019, to when we moved to worshiping online in March 20. And one of the things, while singing in choir with him, that I remember, aside from the gift of art's voice, was his reliability. At any point in time, if the choir was in rehearsal, art was present. And if he wasn't, it was because he was sick or something, not because he didn't feel like it. Art was dedicated. He was dedicated to singing and worship, so I bet there is much rejoicing in the halls of the divine as art joins the heavenly choir, singing blessings and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. I do grieve that I never had the chance to share with Art more of my own story, because like him, both of my parents were Air Force veterans. My, mom, my father and mother both served in that branch, but for all of my regrets, and that is another thing, by the way, that comes with death and funerals, regrets. I still claim to hope. The hope that is uttered in our passage when it says, they will hunger no more, and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. I have hope. Art has been a part of our congregation longer than I have. And I know he has been a part of how our church has been an outpost of hope for our neighborhood, where there is hunger and thirst, where the sun and scorching heat does strike the unsheltered. I wish Art could come to know a bit more about how we are growing and striving to meet these realities, to live into the Lord's prayer that seeks to bring about a reality on earth as it is in heaven. But I did get to talk to him about some of it in his last days. So thank you, Ronnie and Sharon, for urging me to visit as many times as I did. In his last days, as we prayed together and reckoned with what was to come, he faced it with dignity and with courage. I know he would be proud of his congregation. <coughs> the writer of Revelation, many call him John, is experiencing a wild vision of things yet to come. Now, but for many scholars, this book of Revelation is actually understood to be code language and resistance to the Roman Empire, but visions of hope, like what we heard, and in places like Revelation chapter 21, where it says, crying will be no more, still comfort me and give me a place to situate myself when I encounter death. Death is not the end, because salvation as the writer of Revelation says, belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. Death does not have the final say. Death has already been defeated. So what we're really acknowledging today is not the end of Art's life. It's simply marking the passage of Art's life into a new chapter into a new life of worship and glory and honor and thanksgiving and praise, of singing and joy and peace and no more sorrow and no more sickness, no more weakness of heart. And this vision of the future is not exclusive, my friends. For John, the writer of Revelation, saw a great multitude that he could not count. I think this vision of hope is for all of us which should bring us comfort that in our own life, death is not the thing we need to fear. Fear does not need to rule us because we know God is greater than all of our fears. But as we grieve today, 
we can also rest in the presence of God who comforts the afflicted. We are going to miss art. And while death is not the last thing, death does mark the end of knowing art as we have known him in our own stories. <coughs> so I do hope that you will take the time to cry, to mourn, to feel loss, to honor art in your own memories as you continue to share them. Thank you all for being here. And thank God for art. Amen. Let us pray. God of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are weak, strength. To all who have sinned, mercy. To all who sorrow, your peace. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another. In all our ways, we trust you. O oh God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave art to us, now we give art back to you. We commend him to your eternal embrace. And to you, with your church on earth and in heaven, we offer honor and glory now and forever. And we come before you now in prayer and thanksgiving, offering to you the words Jesus taught all of us to pray. Let us now pray those words together with the confidence of children of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At the end of this service, know that there is a light repast, a reception in that room back there. I believe that those panels will be open by the time the service is over. There will also be an opportunity to rest in the side, the fireside room, I believe it was called, right over there. Now, may the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete and everything good so that you may do God's will working among us that which is pleasing in God's sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go now in peace.